Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And I've had such an interesting day today. I woke up today literally, well not literally, figuratively on the wrong side of the bed. I didn't wake up on Alex's side of the bed. I woke up figuratively on the wrong side of the bed. I just was not having a great day when I started. and. Um, even after I did my prayers and meditations today and I asked myself, are you ready to start your day? I still was not feeling great. And I kind of thought to myself, I was like, uh, maybe you should vlog for a little bit, you know? And I'm getting ready to go to this Halloween party tonight. So I started my day actually vlogging when I usually end my day vlogging. And vlogging and just kind of like talking to somebody out there, whoever's out there watching, it's just so cathartic for me. And it really turns my day around. Like I felt fantastic after I got done vlogging. I mean, literally, I haven't watched the vlog back, but you can probably tell from the beginning to the end the com com complete difference in mood of Peter Mon over there. I'm talking about myself in third person. It just really helped me so much, right? And I'm such a believer in starting your day over whenever you need to. And I feel like I've started my day over <laughs> about 10 or 15 times already today. But now I'm in a fantastic mood and I'm on limited time and I've been trying to film these videos. So um, I filmed my vlog, which is almost an hour. And then I just filmed a Peter Does Stuff video showing some things I got in the mail. And then um, now I'm filming this Peterisms video. And I don't, know if I'm, I, I don't know if I'm gonna stop now or if I'm gonna go on, but anyway. I had actually brought out, because um, I didn't know going into my vlog that I was going to just talk and turn my day around. I thought, okay, we're going to need some meditations to turn t today around, right? I had already read some meditations. They weren't really helping. So I brought out the Daily Book of Positive Quotations in my vlog, and I also brought out The Soul's Companion, Connecting with the Soul Through Daily Meditations by T. N. Dayton, PhD. This was one of my mom and I's favorite meditation books, Positive Daily Affirmations. So I thought I would read these in my vlog. Well, I never did read them in my vlog. So I thought, I'm gonna do a Peterisms video and start my day over and read these. So, so 28th, let's get into the daily book of positive quotations. All right, October, I can't believe it's almost November already. October 28th, from the, the daily book of positive quotations. October 28th, Voices Within. The more faithfully you listen to the voices within you, the better you will hear what is sounding outside. Listening to the radio, or, and it's by Dag Hammer Scold. Listening to the radio or watching television, we constantly encounter opinions from people who seem pretty sure of themselves. Newspapers and magazines are full of columns from experts on every topic imaginable. And then there are our friends, family members, and coworkers, all eager to dispense advice. Our head is filled with the noise of all these opinions, noise that sometimes only confuses us. Our opinions can be informed by these other voices, but the one voice we always need to hear is our own. I value the opinions of others, both experts and people I know and respect, but I am a reasonable person with gut feelings that also need to be heeded. Interesting. Um, like, how personal do I really want to get on this? So... When I was going through tough times in my last relationship towards the end, I would say like the last month of my relationship, my last relationship that I was in with my ex, I had been somebody for so long that would contact my sponsor, talk to Tanya, talk to other friends about romantic issues, relationship issues and things like that. And what I found that I was doing and this is me just being completely honest, right? And I think a lot of people do this. But what I found that I was doing, and, and I tried not to do this today, right? Was that I was going to all these people until I heard what I wanted to hear. So I would go to Tanya, and if Tanya didn't tell me what I wanted to hear, like if I wanted to hear, you should stay in this relationship and make it work at any expense. Like, if that's what I wanted to hear in my head, I would go to Tanya, and if she didn't tell me that, I'd say, okay, well, then I go to my sponsor. If my sponsor didn't tell me that, I go to the next person, I go to the next person. And then the, finally, when somebody out of 10 people would tell me that, I'd be like, oh my God, you're so right. Like, that's exactly what I should do. So I was really waiting. I already had the answer form in my head of what I wanted. So I was waiting to hear it from the right person. Does that make sense? Like I'm sure many of you out there have done that. Maybe even unaware that you've done that. I think in that whole process, what I realized was 
that I always kind of just wanted somebody to assure for me. Like, I couldn't make that decision on my own, it felt like. And, and that's not just in romantic situations. It was with anything, you know? Work relationships, personal relationships, friendships, decisions in life, whatever, right? Like, I just wanted somebody to kind of co-sign my decision for me. So... I would go to a lot of people and ask them. In my last relationship, I had done that quite a bit and had gotten a lot of opinions from a lot of different people. And so I felt that going towards the end of the relationship when I was really like, okay, I'm either going, I'm all in and we're going to make this relationship work, which I've said this for a long time. Like, I think if we had gone into therapy three or four years before it ended, which in retrospect is strange because we were together six and a half years, so that would have been close to the beginning. But I think that if we had started therapy three and a half years before it ended, I, I don't know that we would have broken up, if that makes sense. Um, you know, my, my ex is a great guy. Um, we just grew apart and romantically fell out of love. I, I, he was my best friend at the time. It was really difficult to lose a best friend. But there was nothing romantic there. There was nothing passionate there. I mean, like, that part was gone from our relationship. And I needed to have that, you know? I mean, at 15 years plus at this point of being with my husband, I still look at him, like, undressing across the room. And I'm like, damn, my husband is hot. You know what I mean? Or, like, he'll, he'll come home after a long day. And I'm like, God, I missed you so much. There wasn't any of that with us anymore. And that had nothing to do with him. And it had a lot to do with me. And we just... And, and you know, later... He told me when we were talking, he said, you know, I felt very similar to you. I just wasn't willing to say it at the time, you know? And he goes, I think both of us wanted out of the relationship, but we didn't know how to have that conversation because we were so dependent upon each other. And I, I, we really thought we would be together for the rest of our lives, my ex and I. Honestly, we did. I think the hardest thing was losing him as a friend, you know? Um, and I know people are like, well, you can always keep your exes as a friend. I, I find that difficult. I don't know that I really want to hear the inner workings of my exes' romantic relationships. I'm, I'm happy for people that that works for, but for me, I don't think that that would work because I don't know that I know how to have a relationship. And I'm civil. I'm civil with all of my exes, thankfully. Um, and I try to, like I say this to people a lot, like, when people are like, nothing in the relationship was true, it didn't mean anything. I'm like, that's not true. Like, you have to remember the good times, even though maybe it ended horribly. Like, remember the good times about the relationship, and that's what I've tried to do, and I'm very civil with my exes, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, I haven't really talked to my, my last two exes are the ones that I talk about the most, because they were the long-term relationships that I had, other than Alex. I haven't talked to my ex, I mean, it's been years. It's been probably five years, maybe more, since our friend, four or five years since our friend Scotty passed away. And um, and even then, like, I ask Alex, you know, because I think it's a respect thing in a relationship. I said, do you care if I call him and, and let him know that our friend passed away? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And then my other ex, the last time I talked to him, I mean, he moved to Florida, like, 15 20 years ago, and the last time I talked to him, well, I think I, I sent a message to him one time, because he knew Alex, actually. It was funny, like, when Alex and I got together, Alex was, like, kind of surprised that we had dated, because he, like, they had worked together, and, um, like, a, like in a bar situation, when Alex was much younger, and, and uh, so anyway, so the whole situation was kind of funny, because, like, Alex knew him, and I knew him, and I said, oh, and he was dating somebody as well, and so when we went to Florida... I think this is before I was on YouTube, actually. I, like, reached out to him, and I said, like, on social media, and I said, hey, we should get together and, like, you know, meet up and whatever it's been like. I mean, because it's been like, we dated when I started dating him when I was in my first year of sobriety at the end of the first year. So, 27 years ago, we dated, and we dated four and a half years. So, I mean, enough time's gone by, right? But we didn't end up meeting. And uh, we had planned to, but we didn't end up meeting. That was the last time I talked to him, and that was probably, I don't know, seven it was before i was on youtube so eight or nine years ago and i hadn't talked to him before that in like 10 or 15 years so but i have no problem having civil relationships with my exes i just don't want to know them deeply that's just personally how i feel but going through that with my ex 
I realized that I had brought a lot of people into the relationship by asking their opinion, and I think he had as well, and talking to close people in his life about what he should do and stay in the relationship, leave, I had too. So it wasn't just us in the relationship, there were a lot of other people whose opinions and voices were in the relationship. And I kind of made this decision, I don't even really know how I made it, I just was like, it was like about a month before we broke up, I was like going forward, any decision that I make in this relationship is going to be a decision that I make. Like, I'm not even going to tell people that, like, this is where my thoughts are. I'm not even going to tell people that I'm thinking about leaving. I'm not even going to tell people that um, I'm thinking about breaking up with him. And um, and so, because I, I can remember when I finally told Tanya, and Tanya was, like, really surprised. And she was like, I'm kind of surprised you're there. And I was like, I just, because she loved him so much, right? And, um... She didn't really know my first ex-boyfriend, but she really knew my ex, and she, like, loves and adores Alex. So, but she knew my ex. She was close with him and did things socially and stuff with him. So she was kind of surprised, and I had, and she was like, I can't believe you haven't said anything to me about this, and now you're, like, making this decision, and... And I even wasn't even sure when I made the decision. I can remember I just came home one day and he was like so upset. And he was like, either we're gonna stay together or we're gonna break up. And I can remember like the, my work bag just kind of like fell off my shoulder. And it was very much like in Roseanne when um, Jackie and Fred break up. It was like one second that he was there, the next second he wasn't. And I just looked at him and I just said, I think it's over. And I was like devastated when it came out of my mouth, you know? And that was it. And I've said this for a long time. It's like, before you say those words, you know that person and they are your best friend and they are so close to you and you're so close with their family and everything. And two seconds after you say those words, those words come out of your mouth, they are no longer a part of your life. That is probably the most difficult part of a breakup, you know? Looking back, I'm glad that was a decision that I made because this was the thing. I didn't want to blame Tanya. I didn't want to blame my sponsor. I didn't want to blame my mom. I didn't want to blame my friends. I didn't want to blame anybody on this kind of stuff, you know? I wanted to know that if I made the decision right or wrong, it was my decision that I made, you know? And I think in retrospect, I think if I had had other people in my ear, um, that was a hard breakup for me. I went back and forth for about six to eight months of like, should we have broken up? Should we not? Should we, you know, I, even at one point, I've talked about this before, I called him up at like two o'clock in the morning and I said, just come over here. We can work things out. We can make things right. And he said, you were the one that wanted to break up with me. Let me get over you. And, um, and so it was just, it was tough, you know? I think in retrospect, it has allowed me to see what a beautiful person he was and what he contributed to my life because I made the decision that that was over. It wasn't out of animosity, it wasn't out of hatred, it just was that I realized that we were not happy together and we were happy as friends, but didn't we both deserve more out of life? I remember when my parents got divorced and I didn't know for a long time what had happened and years later, when I was like in middle school or high school, I asked my dad and my dad said to me, he said, your mom and I had both fallen out of love with each other, but your mom would never have left the marriage. He said, and I knew that one of us deserved to be happy. And I felt that if I left, at least I would be happy. And I thought she would find happiness too, because we were not happy together at all. And it was such a simple idea, you know? The one person I did actually call at the very end, before we broke up, was my dad. And I called my dad and I said, how did you know with mom that you were no longer in love with her like it had ran its course? Like, how did you know when it was over? And I'll never forget, my dad said to me on the, the phone, like literally verbatim, he said, oh Pete, he said, if you're thinking that, you're already there. And I remember, like for me, I was kind of like, like, I knew that. Like, when he said that, like, I already knew that, you know? <laughs> Which kind of is like, I was waiting. But that was, like, literally, like, the day before we broke up. Um, up until that point, like, I was living it in my head for, like, a month. And I just didn't tell anybody. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything to my ex. Um, I think sometimes we are... It's the hardest for us to talk to our partners, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, romantic partners. It's hardest for us to talk to them about intimacy issues, communication issues, 
feeling like we're not in love with that person anymore. We can talk to everybody in the world about it except for that person that we should be talking to about it. That would be my greatest piece of advice. That one thing that I've really learned from my past two relationships that I've carried into this relationship. When we're having problems, you know, like, oh, I feel like we're heading for divorce. I have said to Alex, I feel like we're heading for divorce. When we're having arguments and we're not communicating well, I've taken it to Alex and said, I don't think we're communicating well. And he said those things to me, you know. I think it's so important to have those conversations with that person, you know. If you're wanting to have sex with your partner and you're not having sex with your partner, say, we're not having sex and I want to have sex, okay? Like, something's going on here. Um, if you're wanting to go to therapy, say, I want to go to therapy. Like, we need to work on this relationship. And But say it to your partner. Don't be taking your girlfriend out to dinner and have or out to lunch and saying to your girlfriend, God, I really wish, you know, saying all these things that you wish to your best friend. That's easy. What's hard is saying it to your partner that you're invested in. That's who you should be saying it to. And that was probably the most valuable lesson I learned through all of it. But I will say this, I think you do have to trust your inner gut on decisions that you make in your life. We can read all the books in the world, we can read all the expert advice and expert opinions and, you know, and all the, the technology of self-help out there, but the reality is, Sometimes we gotta trust our gut, we gotta trust our heart and what we think is best for ourselves and heed that advice. And I think the meditation is fantastic for reminding us of that. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.